Welcome to the third video in a series I'm doing about all my programming projects. Uh, this one is about 2021. Uh, and yeah, it's the year we're in now. So uh, it's the last video for at least a year. So yeah, enjoy. This is the very first version of my blog, which was written in TypeScript with React and Next.js. Uh, I made it because I'm very opinionated when it comes to blogs. So I wanted to create like my perfect version of a blog. Uh, so very minimalistic, no pop-ups, no ads, no cookies. Uh, I had previously used a website called Hacker Noon, uh, which I used to host uh, my first blog post, my only at the time. Um, but I wasn't very happy with that website, mainly because they screwed up the formatting of the most important code snippet. Uh, but also because I had to get like approved for every post that I wanted to do. Uh, with my own blog, it's much simpler. I just upload a markdown file and it makes a new build and a post goes up. This is by far the most influential project I've ever made. Uh, the idea behind it was that I wanted to get better at Linux, but I already understood the basics. Uh, and it's actually a lot more difficult to advance beyond the basic level uh, because there isn't like a clear cut way uh, to doing that, you, you have to take the learning a lot more into your own hands. Uh, and my solution was to come up with 10 subjects that I didn't know, and then create a mini project for each of the subjects. Um, so I did that and I wrote a blog post about it as well, where I described each of the projects and what they were. Uh, and I decided to post it on this website called Hacker News, uh, which is this website where you can post links to interesting stuff. Uh, and it has this front page uh, with the most upvoted submissions. Um, and I've always really loved going to Hacker News. It's one of my favorite websites. Uh, but yeah, so I posted on Hacker News and it goes to the front page and it goes to the very top spot of the front page for like four hours. Uh, and I get a ton, of, a ton of points, a ton of comments, a ton of people interacting with it. Uh, it was just really, really crazy to me. Uh, people really liked it and uh, yeah, uh, liked interacting with, with something I had made. Um, and uh, then uh, a guy reaches out to me uh, and I grab a video call with him and he knows another guy who I also grab a video call with and he's the CTO of a company. Uh, and I actually end up getting hired full time uh, working for this company. Uh, and uh, the culture and the people was just something completely different than what I was used to. Uh, and yeah, I just feel really lucky that one of my projects is, I just ended up getting really lucky and uh, a ton of people liked it and it uh, gave me this great opportunity. Um, for this project, I wanted to create something super simple because at the time I was very busy at my job. Uh, and so I created my own implementation of John Conway's Game of Life. Uh, which is, if you don't know, this concept where you have a grid and you have these cells which can either be on or off or alive or dead. And, and there are these very simple rules that determine if a cell gets to be alive or dead. Um, and it creates these very nice patterns and interactions and uh, yeah, so I made my own implementation of that. This is the last and current version of my blog. Uh, I completely rewrote it because I had another post reach the top spot of Hacker News. Uh, this one wasn't about programming, but about my tiny house uh, living situation. Uh, and at the time, my blog was written uh, with Next.js and hosted on Vercel. But I actually ended up exceeding Vercel's uh, hosting limits, um, partly because I didn't resize the images in the blog post. So they were very large and partly because just so many people were visiting uh, the blog post. Um, so yeah, I just remember being very confused about Russell's uh, pricing model and not being able to turn on flexible billing. Uh, and I eventually actually got banned from Russell. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I wanted to find another service to host my blog. Uh, but I was annoyed by the fact that I was dependent on this Next.js server 
or, or a service that supported that server in order to run my blog. Uh, and then I decided to rewrite the blog uh, and I just made it into a very small Go app that just takes markdown files and turns them into HTML. Uh, and static HTML files are easy to host anywhere. So uh, I picked Firebase and uh, uh, there I can enable flexible billing. So it's not gonna go down again. Here, I wanted to learn different software design patterns. Uh, so I came up with this app, this uh, pet cuteness ranker app that I then wrote in four different ways using four different design patterns. Uh, and I mainly used this book called uh, Software Architecture Patterns by Mark Richards. Uh, it's available online for free. Uh, and the app was written in TypeScript and the front end was made using handlebars templates. Uh, and the database was MongoDB. Um, and I also wrote a blog post for it, but it didn't do very well. Uh, I don't think this is very interesting to other people, but at least uh, for me, it was a really great way to learn these design patterns. Uh, and that's something I recommend to anyone if, if you're trying to learn something, uh, find a way to turn it into a project because uh, that way uh, it will be a lot more fun and, and you'll be able to learn it much better, I think. This time I wanted to make something with WebAssembly. Uh, I thought the idea of having like a backend language uh, run something on the front end was really cool. Um, so I wrote a game with Go uh, that ran on the front end. Uh, the WebAssembly ecosystem for Go is not very mature yet. So I don't recommend making like an important production app with it. But uh, luckily I didn't do that. I just created this strange little game uh, where a yellow car follows your cursor uh, and then you steer it away from these red balls that float across the screen uh, and you die if your car touches the balls or the walls or your cursor so you have to lead it with your cursor but it can never touch the cursor um, so yeah people uh, that played this have been very confused uh, i don't think it's it's very intuitive but uh, I still play it sometimes, uh, it's, it's live right now if you want to go play it. Uh, yeah, and I, I had a lot of fun making it. With this project I had one goal, which was to learn the name, flag and location of every country in the world. Uh, I didn't succeed, but I made this game to help me try. Um, so the game has two modes, there's memory mode and recall mode. And in memory mode, uh, you are supposed to remember all the facts about the country. And then later in recall mode, you'll be asked to uh, recall one of them. Uh, and then you get a point, uh, and if you can't, you lose all your points. Um, so the game was made with TypeScript, and the map was rendered with D3.js. Uh, and the map data came from a website called uh, naturalearthdata.com. Uh, I did write a blog post about it, which did reach uh, the front page of Hacker News, but just barely for like 10 minutes. Uh, and the reason I didn't achieve my goal was that I was much more invested in creating the app than actually uh, learning these facts about these countries. Uh, turns out that geography isn't that uh, interesting to me uh, after all. And uh, yeah, I kind of lost interest after making the game. Uh, but the game was really fun to make, so it, it was definitely worth it. This is definitely one of the fastest projects I've ever made. Uh, it took less than a week from idea to fully finished project. Uh, it's called Magic TypeScript, uh, and it's this cheat sheet of TypeScript's most important or like magical features. Uh, I call them magical because I used to not understand them at all. Uh, but now I feel like I've really mastered those subjects. Uh, so I wanted to create a way to condense that information into like a quick reference for myself and for others. Um, so it's this huge image that you can zoom into and pan around uh, and kind of discover these features uh, and has a bunch of uh, code examples. Uh, it's made with Figma. Uh, I did write a blog post about it, which didn't do very well on Hacker News, uh, but it actually did quite well on Twitter. Uh, which was really nice. Uh, 